Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we will discuss implicit differentiation part two. Hopefully, you have watched implicit differentiation part one. So let's continue. Consider a partial graph of the equation 3x squared minus 4y squared equal 6. At this point in the game, we will not need to know how to graph that. It's enough for us to know that this is the graph of this equation. Notice this particular equation is not a function of x, nor is it a function of y. But this particular equation is graphed on the x-y coordinate axes. And if it is graphed on the x-y coordinate axes, it's enough for us to say that this graph does have tangent lines. And the slope of those tangent lines, we will, as we have been previously, denote the slope of the tangent line as dy dx. So it's enough for us right now to realize that dy dx exists for this particular equation. Given this equation, given the graph of the equation, a partial graph, dy dx does indeed exist. So how are we going to go about finding this derivative of y with respect to x or this dy dx? We'll go to the next slide. Well, before we find out exactly what dy dx is, let's talk about the nature of dy dx, which we know is the equation, is the slope of the tangent line. And if we notice, if I'm in quadrant one here, over here in quadrant one, I have just an example of a tangent line to that graph in quadrant one, and I see that dy dx is positive. Here in quadrant two, I have an example of a tangent line, of a line that is barely touching. I'll scoot it over just a tick, so it is tangent. And it's enough for us to realize that now that dy dx is less than zero. In like manner, if I were in quadrant 3, that dy dx would be positive. If I was in quadrant 4, that dy dx would be negative. So let's find this dy dx for this equation. What I'm going to do I start with that equation, and since I want to find dy dx, I'm going to differentiate both sides of that equation with respect to x. I'm going to d dx it. And I'm going to d dx this particular part first. This derivative is easy. If I differentiate 3x squared, that's simply going to be, let's go back to a decent color here. That's simply going to be 6x, easy enough. And if I recall my discussion from implicit differentiation part 1, I can see that the derivative of this part right here is going to be negative 8y, but I need to tag this dy dx on the end of that. This is the creature that I'm looking for, dy dx. The derivative with respect to anything of a constant is zero. So now I'm just going to do some simple algebra to solve for this dy dx. I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. This will give me this equation, negative 8y dy dx is equal to negative 6x. This dy dx is the creature that I'm looking for. So I'm simply going to divide both sides by negative 8y. That will give me 
dy dx is equal to negative 6x over negative 8y. And that certainly does reduce. It's nice to write it in reduced form. three-fourths x over y. So now I have dy dx, and I will be able to find the value of dy dx given any xy point on that particular graph. So the derivative of y with respect to x is three-fourths x over y, or the slope of all those tangent lines to that graph, three-fourths times the x point divided by the y point. Let's go back and look at that graph. And we can see, here's our derivative. Here's our dy dx, the slope of the tangent line. And we can see that if I take any tangent line in this quadrant here, in quadrant 1, x and y both are positive. Positive divided by positive, positive. 3 fourths times a positive, yes, indeed, is going to be positive. If I take a tangent line here, we'll use a different color in this quadrant, as we've said before. Here, my x's are negative and my y's are positive, and negative divided by positive is negative, and these rascals are indeed going to be negative. I could again take another tangent line over here, whichever one I want, we use a different color on this one, use a nice yellow color. Well, that came out to be black, sorry. But that tangent line has a negative slope, which it should, because if I'm in quadrant four, as I am, the x's are positive and the y's are negative, therefore, Positive to divide by negative is negative times a the positive. These guys should indeed be negative. In like manner, if I would take any tangent line over here, make sure that it was tangent, the x's and the y's both are negative. Negative divided by negative is positive times positive. All those tangent lines would be positive. So we found, and there's a lot going on here. We could pull those tangent lines out of there just for a moment. Let's get them out of there. They're messing everything up. It's a good place for it. So we found dy dx for that particular equation, which equation we were looking at. We were looking at this equation here. 3x squared minus 4y squared is equal to 6. The graph of that, and we found the dy dx. So let's do, before we close this video, Let's take example number two and find dy dx for the equation 2xy plus 4y squared is equal to 6x. Given without a graph, let's just do some analytical work here and find this dy dx. And we will use the same process as we did before. We're going to d dx both sides of this particular equation. So let's get started. Ooh. This very first part, this guy right here, the derivative with respect to x of 2xy, xy we know is a product. So let's get back to this piece in a moment. Let's do this piece right here, which we know if I'm going to d dx this piece, this is going to be 8y. I need to tag a dy dx on that. And if I d dx, differentiate with respect to x of 6x, that's simply going to be a 6. So let's get back to this first piece here that's a product. Let's use our infamous product rule on that. And let's let this piece right here be f. And this piece right there be g. And let's use our product rule. This is going to be f prime g plus g prime f. Let's not absolutely not forget that we are going to, we still have these pieces here, 8y dy dx, which is equal to 6. Let's get back and use this product rule. 
we see here that f prime is 2. Let's put that rascal in there. f prime is 2, and g is y. g prime, if I'm just differentiating this guy right here, the derivative of y with respect to x is simply dy dx. And we remember that from implicit differentiation day one. f is 2x. So let's write that rascal there. And so now I have three terms on the left side of the equation that, gild, that yields the derivative of this particular equation that we started with. 2xy plus 4y squared is equal to 6x. It yielded three terms on the left because of this product rule, of this product here, and I had to implore the product rule. So what I want, I want dy dx. So I'm going to take this term here and move it to the right side of the equation by subtracting it. And I'm going to rewrite my, clean this up a little bit, put the 2x out in front. At 2x times dy dx plus 8y dy dx. Keep in mind, I subtracted the 2y, so that's going to equal 6 minus 2y. I'm not finished yet. A couple steps, and I will have solved for dy dx. The next step is a step that most people get stuck on. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to factor the dy dx out of both of these terms. What does that yield? Let's go to a color that we can see. 2x plus 8y in parentheses, dy dx, and that is equal to 6 minus 2y. So I have this product here, 2x plus 8y times dy dx is equal to 6 minus 2y. I'm left with one final step, and that is to divide both sides by 2x plus 8y. So dy dx for that particular equation that I started with is 6 minus 2y divided by 2x plus 8y. And that is the derivative of that equation that I started with. We'll zoom out just a tick. Of this particular equation right here. 2xy plus 4y squared equals 6x. The derivative is this rascal right there. This will be a good video to watch a couple times until we get proficient at finding dy dx for an equation given in x and y. Thank you very much.